I choose San Francisco as the next place to open up such a beautiful restaurant. Well, always go against the tide is my philosophy in yeah. business. Do the opposite. That tends to work out well. Okay. But the truth is, San Francisco is not going anywhere. It's a great city. Yes, it's had its ups and it's experienced a down. And I do think we're in a recovery stage right now. I say we like I'm a local now. Mm. But, um, you know, opening this restaurant and seeing the levels of business, it's the busiest restaurant I own in my group internationally. This one smashes all of them. So wow. it was the right decision for sure. There's some good deals to be had when everyone's walking away. Landlords get a bit more desperate so we got a really good deal on probably one of the best sites I could think of finding in the world so it was a great idea for us to come here well it truly is a beautiful business and you're about to walk us through one of the beautiful dishes that you uh, offer at Chotomaki yes so the Nikkei sashimi mm -hmm. I like to use this as a great um, demonstration if anything to show the Japanese aspects of the, di the, the dish and the Peruvian. Mm -hmm. And you ha you'll see all the ingredients here. We've got yeah. the yellowtail sashimi, which you'd find in any Japanese restaurant, yes. of course. Then you start to get a bit different, you know, because there's soy and yuzu in here, some J Japanese elements and truffles. So now we get some earthiness. But this color and vibrancy doesn't just make the plate look beautiful. It mm -hmm. makes it taste just as good. Um, so what I'm going to do is just throw it together. All right. And we've got sashimi cut there ready. It's yellowtail. Gorgeous. Green jalapenos. Oh. Um, go in and so in Peru they have um, a very typical salsa called salsa creole mm -hmm. and in that is green jalapenos culantro or cilantro red onions and lots of lime so those dishes that there is a side dish that mm -hmm. you'd have with other others um, and what we've done here is combine those two dishes pretty much so a side dish and a, and a sashimi dish mm -hmm. excuse the hands but it's really the only way to get that around yes. so by it coating it all then we can plate it up. Excuse the speed of it. I know. <laughs> I know we're in a slight rush here. Well, it um, smells delicious. Yeah. And you know, like when I was out in Peru and we were looking around, we saw how colourful, vibrant the buildings were, the textiles, the materials. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. Here, we're going to just leverage it on there. Yeah, I'm going to um, help you out with the balance. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, and I wanted to have that replicated on the plate. You know, often. You know, food doesn't replicate, replicate the landscape, mm -hmm. but here we did. We've made our own plates. They're very crafty wow. and arty. So we have purple potatoes here. Okay. That adds a little bit of crunch and color, which we like. Some nice texture yeah. as well. So the texture is all, also important. And what you get when you bring all of these things together, spice, mm -hmm. you get the sour, the sweet notes, the savory <coughs> notes, and the floral notes that we get from the coriander. And well, we call it cilantro over here. <laughs> and then I like to add a little okay. bit of extra color with these edible oh, flowers. Beautiful. And then finish with a little sprinkling of salt over the top, and you're good to go. And there's oh, your dish. Gorgeous. All the prep work is where all the labor goes. Yeah. The finishing is the fast part. And, that you know, really is beautiful. Then you start to see a dish that comes together like that. And yeah. it's really beautiful and, most importantly, extremely tasty, which I do believe you know. You yes, know this dish, yes, don't you? Yes, yes, yes. So, me about the full it. disclaimer yeah, I had a chance to, to try this just the other day. And this, this was actually my favorite item on the menu. And I don't think you knew that I've actually. <laughs> no, I before. didn't know. I didn't know. <laughs> so it's just, it was just incredibly fresh and very flavorful, and just the colors and the texture just went together so well. Yeah, so. I mean, this, this works really well. It's been on our menu now for over 10 years when we opened mm -hmm. our first in London. Wow. Um, and we've expanded around the world, and this follows us everywhere we go. We have a few other dishes I can talk you yeah, through very please, quickly. Yeah, please do. This is a tuna tataki. Tataki essentially means slightly cooked on the outside, um, and then surrounded by a uh, mustard miso we call karashi sumiso mm -hmm. and mustard goes so well with uh, tuna because tuna actually has some qualities like beef right so beef right. and mustard or horseradish and wasabi okay. all works on those flavor profiles and they've got a very herby sweet honey the sweetness comes from honey we don't like to use sugar and and multiple herbs in there with some chili so it's a spicy sweet mustardy dish you can only taste it to understand how those okay. things work together it, yeah it looks beautiful and, and over here you call them pot stickers i believe but we call them gyoza in japan yes, and uh, that's they're, they're yeah. stuffed with uh, uh prawn and pork belly um, that all gets cooked and then packaged into the skin and the one side's grilled face down and the other side steamed as it's a two-part cooking process mm. then you have a smoked um, uh, ponzo in the middle with a uh, red peppers and a sweet uh, potato uh, puree around the edge. Oh my gosh, it's so it impressive. <laughs> now, um, you know, your restaurant um, just opened a few months ago, but it's already become a hot spot for a local, a bunch of local newsmakers, really. I yeah. mean, uh, just the other day, I, I believe when I was there, I saw a former mayor, Willie Brown, celebrate yeah. his 90th birthday. I was actually at that table with him that yes, night. We were yeah. celebrating his 90th birthday. Could you tell us what he ordered? Uh, well, we ordered for him. <laughs> we didn't let him order, but we had a, actually a special menu made for this trip 
in particular where we went locally and sourced all the seafood out of the bay mm -hmm. um, and we went as far as Maine to get our lobsters but uh, it was a locally sourced seafood inspired menu that uh, also a lot of the inspiration came from a recent trip that I just had in Peru where I discovered all these new techniques and we wanted to put those straight to work and we did so with that menu so it worked out really well and it was a one-of-a-kind menu but I'm thinking of adding those dishes straight to the menu because they were really good. Fantastic <laughs> and Kurt as we wrap things up here I'd, I'd love for you to share this with our viewers you know this is obviously not the first restaurant you've opened you were quite a success story yourself of being behind great establishments like Nobu and Hakkasan. What right. is the secret to your success do you think? Hard work, okay. determination <laughs> and when anyone tells me I can't do it I have to prove them wrong so that's great motivation for me because everyone's mm -hmm. told me my whole life I can't do something and it's only elevated me further. Fantastic. <laughs> Any words of advice for those who are seeking to follow in your footsteps? Um, come and talk to me I'll help you. <laughs> <laughs> it took me 35 years to get where I am and uh, you know I still still am learning so if you're new to the business go to professionals get good advice get a good mentor and uh, let them help you through those painstaking decisions that you have to make throughout this career. All right, fantastic. Kurt Stazar with Chotto Mate. Thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure. Us this really morning. nice to see you. All Thanks right. for having me. Of course.